looking you straight in the face <laughs> because of this wonderful thing called Skype. It's Ronnie Bennett. Good hi, Ronnie. Morning. Yes, hi. Good morning. How are you? How you feeling? I'm okay. I'm all right. Yeah. Now, you told me something that immediately hit me, uh, that you said you went to physical therapy. Well, you see, one of the side effects of chemotherapy, which I've not done for several months, is neuropathy, which I have in my feet and my hands. Mm -hmm. But also, I've been waking, I've discussed this, I don't know, here, but somewhere before, um, with a lot of pains in body joints. Mm -hmm. And normal over-the-counter uh, treatment will take care of them. It takes two hours in the morning to kick in when I look pretty funny. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then a doctor last week, I have a lot of doctors, and they change from time to time, so this was a new one, suggested for my hands that I can barely close this much. And I mm -hmm. think I've talked about it. Hard to hold a toothbrush when you can't close your hands any further than this. Yeah. Um, I thought that it could help, and I think it's from chemo, and I'm stuck with it, but what the hell, I'll give it a try. So I went yesterday, and there's this woman I met. It's called occupational therapy, and I've forgotten the difference between that and physical therapy, but all she deals with are hands. That's it, just hands. I mean, you know, we joke about doctors slice and dice medical care into these yeah. tiny little yeah. but well, she only does hands, and I was, you know, expecting her to say, but only these two fingers or something. And uh, so she gave me some exercises that should give me less pain, she said, in time. So we'll see. We will see. But I was interested that, you know, for all of my joking about if you go to a pulmonologist, he can't answer questions about pain and the Dahina doctor who handles that can't answer questions about something else and so on. Well, there was my proof yesterday. I went to see the very nice hand lady. <laughs> so, yeah, but you say you were only there, you told me you were only there for a couple of minutes? No. Oh, okay, I thought you said that. No, yeah. no, yeah. no, yeah. no. Full, full scale examination and teaching me how to do the more, my now morning exercise, my morning routine. Yeah, it's now got such a long list. It's hard to know that I ever will do it all unless I write it down. Well, I had a torn meniscus, and I I went to physical therapy. Uh, and uh, the thing, I, you know, I here's the thing. I thought I go to physical therapy, and the guy would like rub me, put stuff on me, make me feel better. But no, he's telling me all these things I'm supposed to do when I get home. Right. And, yes. And I never yes. had a I never had a, an area of medicine that required homework. <laughs> you know? Yeah, me too. I have homework. <laughs> you know, and I'm going. Well, wait a minute. Aren't you supposed to like knead me and push me and prod me and cr uh, no? Go see a chiropractor if you want that. You know. But you know what? Once before, you know, as I've yeah. often mentioned, until the cancer. I was, you know, 76 years disgustingly healthy, but I developed thing, something that I came to learn is known in the vernacular as foot flop. And one of my feet, I would take a step as you normally do, and the other one would flop down. Mm -hmm. And I'd take a step and this would flop down. And so the doctor sent me to a physical therapist, and it turned out, if you want to, if you care, there's some nerve that runs down your leg, and if you cross your legs, which I do mm -hmm. when I sit, yeah. uh, it can damage that nerve, and that causes foot flop. And I'm thinking, yeah, 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 I didn't know anything about physical therapy, except what you see in the movies, and you don't know whether to trust that or not. So this physical therapist gave me, like I have now, he gave me about five minutes' worth of exercises to do every day. Yeah. And, you know, I'll give it a shot. I don't believe in it, it doesn't seem to me, but I'll give it a shot. And it worked. So I have a great deal of respect now for physical therapists. Yeah, well, they're, they're, uh, uh, my physical therapist got rid of my torn meniscus, although I just tore it again. But uh, I know what to do with it this time. But it, it you know, um, it, 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 physical therapy does does work. I, I then got neuropathy in my feet, <coughs> I have it fairly badly. And I went to the uh, 
uh, to the physical therapist, and he really he didn't agree with my doctor that the I have my feet are kind of hurting on the bottoms. He said that's not neuropathy, that's plantar fasciitis. And so he had me do a thing where I roll my feet on a, well, he gave me a golf ball. I've since sent away for the official plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis uh, uh, rub on the bottom of your now, football. Can we move on? <laughs> well, here's what I have. This is this this is the thing I use. Okay. Yeah. And as I'm talking to you, I'm rolling it under yeah. my foot. Can we move on? I mean, I understand why young people don't want us talking about these things. Well, it's better I'm doing that than masturbating for crying out loud. You know. I, Alex, how do you go to this place? I don't know. I that's me. You know me. You no, know. I mean, just, you know, could you leave that part out? <laughs> I'm just trying to say things could be worse. You know, but oh. anyway. So so the the physical therapy has been working for your hands. I don't know. It's only the first day. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I, I just You just said you had a whole new appreciation, and I no, went. No, that was from the story I told you about my foot flop. Oh, about the foot flop. I never, Which I think it's a great name, flip flop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the opposite of flip flop. Uh, you know what I mean? A, um, I wanted to ask you about um, Sharpie Gate. Sharpie Gate. Yeah. Yeah. What about it? I'm throwing it to you, darling. Well, I I have to give him credit. He does know how to do a semicircle. So, you know, I mean, he, he did a very, it was a very, it was very cleanly done. Uh, but it still was so obvious, it was ridiculous, you know. And uh, I, uh, but well, the part that got me is, uh, I can't remember who it was in his cabinet, threatened to fire people at Russ. the, yeah, at the weather people stuff who, uh, who said that he was wrong. You know, uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, this is getting to be like, we're going to make the truth happen, even if it's a lie. You know? This is now, before it was a joke. I mean, mm -hmm. our idiot president, right? Mm -hmm. um, who just can't let go of anything. Now it's deeply serious. What has happened is, if it's not the least political, it's one of the least political agencies of the federal government, NOAA, NOAH. It's the fucking weather they, department, you know? I'm sorry, I was saying something yeah, and you said... It, it was it was a goddamn weather department. I mean, it's the weather, you know? Yes, that's what I'm saying, that it's science-based and the least political, except for the very top appointees, the one of the least political agencies of our government, it is now a political agency, and I would guess that every head, every political head of every agency in the United States government now feels free to lie to us, even if it could cost lives, within, which in this case it could have. Well, I mean... Um, and, and this is a serious slide uh, out of democracy and into something else awful. Well, I heard something about what he did being illegal. In other well, it's words, it's not about that because nobody will do anything about anything being d illegal. It'll, yeah. That's you know, we know nobody is ever, you know, with the exception of what three or four people that were most obvious about it. Nobody gets prosecuted for any potential crimes in this government. Yeah, um, and they all. I mean, you can, we could talk about, in that respect, talk about the Scotland airport and Turnberry, you know, and so on. Yeah. Um, but this thing where the head of a cabinet, in a head cabinet position, says, I will fire you if you don't lie about what the president said. We don't have any way to trust anybody in government anymore. Well, that also yep, puts nobody. A, that also That's yeah, a single that, person. Well, that puts a lot of people on notice that if you do something that goes against the president and what he has said. No, no, no. That's not the point. You're yeah. missing the point. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's all true. We all know that. Yeah. But the point is that the government 
as a democracy is gone. It has disappeared as of Ross saying that. Wow. Yeah. It doesn't exist. Anybody can do that now. I will fire you unless you say out loud to the press exactly what I tell you. So how do we... And when it's something like the Weather Service, we saw what it did. We're still... We're going to see for years what it did in the Bahamas and so on. Um, and any agency, even the ones like the Weather Services that are as non-political you can get, whether is or whether isn't, you know? I mean, there's there's nowhere in between. There's now all in between and no facts. Yeah. And anybody can do that in the federal government now. It's, and uh, you're not worried? Uh, of course I'm worried, you know. Uh, but, I meant that rhetorically, but you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, but in a way they passed it off as kind of a little piffle of sorts. You know, like, oh, well, it's just a Sharpie on a map. No, it wasn't just who a did? sharpie. Who did? Who did that? A, a lot of the Republicans were trying to just like, you know, oh, it's just I, a tempest in a... Republicans haven't even discussed it. It's a tempest in a teapot, some people were saying. You know, why make a big deal out of this? And and you you're giving... You're giving who said that. You're giving every reason for them to... Uh, for, for, for why we should care about something as simple as taking a sharpie and changing a map. You know? On the face of it, it looks like something very simple, but it isn't. Well, it's not simple. It's destruction of democracy. Yeah, yeah. Simple or not isn't the point. It's a, it, it, it's a huge, large chunk of the integrity of the federal government is gone mm -hmm. because everybody will feel free to do this now without consequence. You know, you're, you're the one person I can come to and say, when I was a boy, and you could understand, <laughs> and I was there, <laughs> and, you, and you were there, or you were there within a short amount of time, about a year yes. l earlier than, uh, later than me, but you know, when I was a boy, we had a certain idea of what this country was, a and and we treated it with a, a great deal of respect, and said, you know, this is America, and this you were taught in school, this is what being an American is. Everything that Trump is doing goes counter to everything you and I were taught in school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, some people would make the argument that there are things we were not taught. There were schools that did not teach about the concentration camps for Japanese in World War II. Right. Or the murder of most of the original uh, inhabitants of North America, mm -hmm. um, and we weren't taught those things. I mean, Lewis and Clark were big heroes, right? I didn't know about the rest of it. And Sacagaw poor Sacagawea has to stand in for every other Native American of that era. Um, and, uh, well, I suppose you're right, you know, yeah. um, except for us old folks who remember that. But oh, the, you want to hear one that I was taught? So the oh. thing that's so awful about this, yeah. it's so awful, is lives were at stake. And now it's business as usual. If you run an agency, particularly I suppose if President Trump appointed you to head it up, mm -hmm. you can go stand in front of a bunch of media microphones and cameras and say anything you want whether it's true or not, and that's that. There is no consequence. And it can mean, in terms of weather, it can mean horrendous amount of death and destruction. And uh, I don't, I think there's somebody I read in the, maybe the New York Times or the Washington Post this morning who took up the point of view of exactly what I'm talking about with you but it's the only one I've seen. And I read pretty widely. I get an awful lot yeah. of news newsletters in my email box every morning, and I click through and read a lot of it. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't see anybody else talking about it from that point of view. It's the only one that makes sense to me that we must recognize what I've just said. I don't know what we can do about it. I don't have an answer. You know, you, we, we were talking about when, what we were taught in school. Let me tell you something I was taught in school that will just absolutely... It, this, it, all things weren't wonderful when we were kids. You know, we'd like to think so, 
But in years that have passed, all this seems ridiculous. I, I took psychology in high school. And in the psychology book, it said that if you were an idiot, you had an IQ of 0 to 25. IQ 25 to uh, 50 was imbecile. Uh, 50 to we 70. We don't use those words anymore. Though. I know those we, we don't, but we were taught this then. 50 to 70 was moron. And you're going to die when you hear this. 70 to 80 was American Indian. Really? Yes, that was in my psychology book. Wow. And so, of course, being taught that, I believed for a while that the American Indian had a low IQ. But it was yeah. it was definitely in the book. You know? Yeah. How interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we don't use those terms anymore, do we? Do we have those classifications any longer? Well, who was it that called the president a moron? <laughs> he got fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. Uh, um, but we haven't used those in decades, you know. But, no, I had never heard that. What's, your, never heard that. what's your prediction for the election? Do you have any predictions, any thoughts about the chances that we can get this guy out of office? No, because I think that, you know, we've got way more than a year until people vote. Mm -hmm. And so much can happen in that period of time. And you don't know from our point of view now what's going to be important. For example, I've made a very, very big deal about Wilbur Ross and the whole, um, what gate, what, which gate is this? Sharp, Sharpie already. gate. Sharpie gate. Sharpie gate. Um, you know, that, that has very, very serious overtones. And, um, and other things will come up that will be played up that don't need to be and played down that should be played up. Mm -hmm. And how the, the, the country responds to it will have so much to do with the election. I think that what we can know now is like the election, is it in South North Carolina today? Mm -hmm. The one that was left over from the 2018 election. Um, and it was so close between the Republican and the Democrat that they had to do a, re a redo, so everybody's voting again today. Or are the ones who choose to, and um, maybe that will tell us, give us a little bit of a hint. They're trying to tell us, at least the media I see, <laughs> um, is that the Republican, that Republicans uh, don't support Trump anymore. But nobody's going to say that out loud. Well, why? You know. Um, then there are all the Republicans resigning and not rerunning. You know, running to. Um, to stay in their seats in Congress. But I don't know that an awful lot isn't going to change between now and Election Day that doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that yet that those things make a difference. Yeah. Um, I think it's very serious since Congress apparently still will do absolutely nothing to rein in Trump and his um, uh, grifter appointees. Well, it, it'll be up to us, the people, if we want if we want to change well, a government. You know, what, what, it's not, what, Congress will not do anything. They've shown us that for two Congress, and a half, three years. Congress hasn't done anything about uh, the emoluments clause. I mean, the fact that this guy is still doing business when he shouldn't be is ridiculous. You know that he has his uh, he has his vice president, I think it was, uh, go. 200 miles out of his way to stay at a Trump uh, uh, resort in, uh, where was it, Ireland or someplace like Scotland. that? Scotland. Uh, uh, it got worse. It got worse. Uh, it apparently, hundreds of trips that used to be made through other ways, mm -hmm. uh, military airplane trips, are now stopping at that same airport next to his... Um, next to his resort there, Turnberry, mm -hmm. and um, and staying overnight there, and then going on to wherever they were going to in the Middle East or something somewhere. And apparently that's been going on since the beginning, and it's the only thing that keeps that airport afloat financially because there's nothing else there but the golf course. And so Trump is ha has 
apparently, we don't know for sure yet, but there seems to be a lot pointing in that direction, has done a deal with the airport to have military transport refuel there at higher cost than if they went to an, an American base in Europe to refuel. Hmm. Um, so, it, you know, it doesn't stop. But, but why, you know, why we don't stop him from doing this? I don't you know, understand Why we that. Say, don't say to him, look, you cannot do business. You have to put yourself in a blind trust, you know, which he, I don't well, think he's done he that, do. uh, you know, uh, which every president does, so that he doesn't make decisions based upon his own personal wealth, you know. And in, in this case, you not only have a president who supposedly has great wealth, but in fact does not and is getting rich off of this, you know. Well, you know, I mean, that, the, that's, you know, kind of the overview. On, it's the specific things that bother me that Congress has done nothing about. Now, the laws are all terribly fuzzy about this. I just don't believe there isn't something that can be done if you're not, mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I don't know what's wrong with the Democrats. They've always taken advantages and turned them into disadvantages all my life. Well, I, um, think, I think the Democrats have this sense of... Uh, being nice or trying to be nice, and that you can, you, that kills them every time because somebody somebody like Trump comes along and takes advantage of that, you know. You know, you could have we wept yesterday again because of Trump. That more than a hundred people were turned away in the Bahamas from a boat going to Nassau because they didn't have visas. And Trump's out there, again, said he had to, to do this because there were drug dealers and bad people, very, very bad people, that's the quote, coming on those boats as refugees. Well, I, I think the drug dealers are also refugees in this case. Yes, yeah. they're legitimate <laughs> refugees. I mean, the destruction's pretty total. <laughs> um, but and apparently, I can't find it anywhere this morning, apparently... It had been said that anybody could travel, you know, on these boats that are coming by to get people mm -hmm. off of here because there's no water, there's no food, there's no nothing. They've got to go somewhere else. Yeah. And um, and then he backed the president said, no, 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 we had to take those people off the boat because they're drug dealers and bad people. And uh, he, uh, he uses that as a scare tactic every time. Drug dealers, uh, rapists. Uh, you know, when there's no proof that any of those people were that, you know, and and these were people who needed help. We were talking about a boatload of two or three hundred people. It doesn't matter. Just get them somewhere where they can get fresh water and food sorted out later. Right. The humanitarian problem first. And uh, what is and the what is it's this? It's just that you just weep. At this, yeah. I mean, well, imagine well, what, what, being what, on a, if you know. Often, I don't know if it has yeah. to do with the drugs I take nowadays. Speaking of drugs, of the drugs I take nowadays or what, but I often come in from grocery shopping or lunch with a friend or something, just dying of thirst. Can't get a glass of water in my fist fast enough. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever been there, we all have. And think about there's nowhere to go for fresh water to drink. How do you even? function when you feel like that I, I i just it's just dumbfounding that every single morning it seems to me you're damn close to that i wake up and the president the president himself not somebody acting for him and maybe then erroneously every day the president has done something that is cruel to some group of people every single day close enough yeah yeah and again, that wasn't what we were taught in school. We were taught we were wonderful people and we help people out. And when people are in need, we're the country who's there and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And instead, we got this, um, this I won't use a term, uh, as, as president. By the way, I'd be happy to know my wife uh, has been banned from a Twitter how did she pull that off? <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, Trump's Twitter account, because oh, she not from uh, Twitter. Yeah, because she uh, uh, I can't remember the term she used now, but she 
she was calling him a whore or something. And they said, that's inappropriate behavior on, on Twitter. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that's inappropriate on Twitter. So uh, uh, she's been literally... Kind of wear it as a badge of honor. <laughs> yeah, she's been put on waivers for a while on, uh, on, on Twitter because of that. And she does take it with a badge of honor. You know, I'm yeah. very proud of her. Yeah. Yes. I said, apparently, but he probably never saw it, but, you know, somebody did. Yeah. Hey, there's, a, there's something I'm curious about that viewers probably can't see, but I want to see, and then they'll be able to. Mm -hmm. Off to your right shoulder, mm -hmm. there's in a very, we may have done this before, and I'm, I'm just too old to remember. Um, there's a photograph leaning against the thing that's a very elaborate gold photograph. Yeah. Our photograph, yeah. What is it? Um, you know, I don't know. It's Marjorie's. Oh. Uh, it might be family, old family. I see. But it's a beautiful... I can't see the photograph, but the frame is beautiful. Oh, the frame is gorgeous. It's wonderful. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Okay, that's good. And we talked I, about... I really need more coffee badly. <laughs> uh, me too. I, it's a bad... It, I, I uh, underslept, as it were. Underslept, okay. Yeah. But anyway, see, you feeling okay? I mean, everything's kind of... You know, given what is, I feel fine. You feel fine. Ladies and gentlemen, you can find her at timegoesby.net. That's her blog. And uh, it teaches you about what it's like to get old, which is <laughs> not necessarily depressing. Uh, Isn't it's a very good thing? Mm -hmm. I mean... Hey, I'm 78 and I'm still here. It's That's better to be 78 than to have gone at 75, you know? So, whatever. Hey, I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, okay? Okay. Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen.